Welcome along to Racing Weekly's Cheltenham Festival Preview. This is a podcast and YouTube show brought to you by Odds Checker in association with Bet365. Looking ahead to day three of the Cheltenham Festival alongside uh, Steve Ryder, Willie Twiston Davies, Pat Cooney and Gavin Lynch. Hopefully bringing you lots of winners along the way. Before we get into the races, just to tell you about this offer from Bet365. It's never ordinary at Bet365. That's why they are offering a super boost from 10 a.m., Every single day of the Cheltenham Festival, T's and C's apply. Um, Pat, what is the super boost? It's, uh, several horses will be increased in their price throughout the morning and early afternoon. And there will be horses at the top end of the market. So uh, expect some of the very popular horses to be uh, even bigger value for the super boosts. All right, let's get into race one on day three. And that, of course, is the Turner's Novices Chase. Um, I'll start with you here, Gavin, because... I want to hear your thoughts on the horses at the top of the market. I'm happy to take on the likes of Ginny's Destiny, for example. I'm not sure that they stand out that much. Uh, Ginny, Ginny's Destiny coming from handicaps. Just one of the greatest sights in racing is Harry Cobden, a front runner. I think it's amazing. Uh, he'll be out in front probably again. I'm going to go for Grey Dawning. I thought he should have won two starts ago. Um, he's a very, very good horse. Uh, bolted up the last day. Has a tendency maybe to jump the odd one to the left, but that's okay. I think he's the best horse in the race. Um, <coughs> got a text there earlier saying that um, Rich Ritchie, uh, Gaelic Rich Warrior. Ritchie, yeah. Rich Ritchie, Ritchie. yeah. Rich <laughs> Ritchie, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, might go to the Arkle. They're leaning that way anyway at the moment, so I see his prices shortened with the Arkle. Um, Fasal Vega would have a chance stepping up and trip, certainly on breeding, and even when you look at the visuals the last twice, uh, needs to step up and trip with loops off ground that Willie says we're going to get. Uh, he'd have a chance. Oroko has only had the one run, was very impressive in Warwick. Um, so for me, Ginny's destiny to make it, but Grey Dawning, I think, will run a massive race. Okay. Pat? Well, this is, uh, this is quite a rare event, this one, because the front two in the market are both trained in England, and uh, that doesn't happen too often. And throw in Oroko as well. It could be a one, two, three for uh, domestic based horses. I think Oroko's the interesting runner in the race. I think we all fell in love with him when he made a, a good-looking chase debut. But he's not run, what, it'll be 128 days. But I, 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 I'm quite surprised that uh, the trainers have been enough to convince the connections to run him in this race. They must think the absolute world of him. To win a race like this uh, with just one chase to his name, thinks they must think an awful lot of him. Of course, he's got the course form. For me, he's the most interesting in the race. Of the two at the top, Grey Darning's got the, the, the form in the book. But Ginny's Destiny is three runs, three wins at Cheltenham, so you have to love that. The honeymoon's over with Fasil Vega for me. I keep, you know, I keep trying to love the horse, and then, then he goes and disappoints, and there seems to always be a, a, a reason for the defeat. Oroko's the sexy one in the race, so uh, mm. I'll go with the sexy horse. Bringing sexy back. Um, Willie? I just don't know where he's going to run, but great dawning for me. If he turns up in the turners, he's definitely a better horse than... Um, Ginny's Destiny. He was stuffed first time out last year, Ginny's Destiny, at the Aintree Maiden Herder when Tom Lacey trained him. Yeah, of course, he's doing these nice performances now, but I just generally believe Grey Dawning has got the measure of him yeah. on ratings and everything. Oroko, I don't think you can go off one run at Warwick against that poor horse. I don't know what it was. Johnny Del Hayes of... Um, Golden Sun. Golden yeah. Sun, yeah. That's just not good enough around Warwick. Warwick's a horrible track for funny results. You often, often get them there. That's not, not good enough for me. Broadway boy got beaten, was it? He's ain't got stuff there. Exactly. Like, yeah, get some funky results around there. Don't worry about that. The Leamington Spa, exactly where they were getting downgraded and they're disappearing. <laughs> Hence, when they caught off the Kingmaker, they just don't want the races run anymore. Perfect. Uh, Fasal Vega, no, he's disappeared. Just because out of Vega doesn't mean he's a champion. He definitely isn't. Hmm. Um, Gallup Warrior can't go that way. If, if, if Great Dawning turns up, I generally believe he could be actually probably the best price horse of the festival. He probably should be a six to four shot. He definitely, definitely beats Ginny's Destiny. Um, exactly, that's as confident as I can be about a horse in a race. A Roku, you can't just turn up after that long, longer layoff. Josh and um, Ollie Green are great, but you know, you're taking on the likes of Paul Nichols and Dan Skelton. They're going to be fit, hard, ready. Uh, I, I generally think a Grey Dawning would be um, near enough the certainty of the meeting if you ran in it, but um, that's up to them. Okay. Uh, Roku, it is a hard ask after that. I mean, they didn't think he'd be ready for this after the injury. No, there's a good stat, though. Only three Martin Pipe winners have returned the next year in a festival novice chase. Two of them won. That was Sir Deschamps and Dom Poli. Yeah. And the third was Galopin Deschamps, who obviously would have won 
what, what was it called then? The Marsh, the Turners. Turners. Yeah, Turners yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that's one stat that you can obviously back up for for Iroko. Fasal Vega, if he does come here, uh, would be interesting. Um, I do think he does need an intermediate trip these days. He just doesn't jump like a two-miler. Um, I'd be more positive on Ginny's destiny than what the other guys have been. You, you can't not be impressed by him. He's improved 22 pounds in the handicap. His three wins have come at the track, so you know that he's going to handle that. And like Gavin says, Harry Cobden on a front runner at Cheltenham is, is lethal, just like he was on Stage Star last year. I actually think he's going to be a big drifter on the day. I think loads of people are going to try and get him beat. Uh, the likes of Fasal Vega and Oroco, I think, will be quite well backed in this. And uh, Ginny's Destiny is currently five to two. I think you'll get closer to five to one on the day, and I can't see him out of the three. So, just just wait on the day, back him each way, and he won't be out of the three. Okay. Uh, obviously, these sort of events are always interesting for things you hear. Um, word is spreading that uh, Willie Mullins is working Fasal Vega harder than he's ever done um, because he feels he's been a little bit easy on him and. And what that means, I'm not entirely certain, but word is spreading that this is really sort of a last chance saloon for Fasal Vega to live up to the belief that William Mullins has always had that he is something special. So, I mean, he's got good chest on, chest on form, hasn't he? He won the champion yeah, bumper yeah. and finished second as a Supreme. Like, he's not a bad horse. Well, he seems to have gone the, the wrong way. And the softer the ground, the better his chance as well. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't, I'd, I'd, I'd be with him one last chance. Um, okay. Uh, race two on day three of the festival is a Potemps handicap hurdle. Um, Willie, I'll, I'll start with you here because there might be two possible runners here. Two possible runners. Um, I've got to be diplomatic because obviously I've got two different owners. Um, Cuthbert Dibble, I've always felt, has been very special. Um, I bought it myself for 85,000 euros, whatever he was. He's always proven to be a very, very good workhorse and very talented. He had a minor setback at the beginning of the season. And that's why we haven't run him so long. He said two wins. Probably could argue running back too soon at Haydock. And the young lad who rode in Finn Lambert's a very good young jockey, but hit the front three, four furlongs out and he had to fight to win after having what could have possibly, been, everyone would usually say, the bounce factor. I thought he's won twice in a row very, very well. Um, he's masquerading for me as a graded horse and handicapper. I'd say after Broadway Boy, he's probably our best chance of the meeting. Sam will be on him. He'll settle well. Hopefully, it'll be soft ground, as I've been telling everyone. It probably will be. <laughs> He'll handle all sorts, sorts of conditions. I just really struggled not to see him running a big race. Yeah. Um, but then your eye tinkers over to Gal Road, who was beaten a couple of lengths by Crambo at Haydock. He's had a couple of minor adjustments done the last couple of weeks with the vet. We had to get him qualified at Exeter and, um, excuse my language, Sam got off my Exeter and said he just felt shit. <laughs> and he still finished fourth and ran a good race, but we had to get him qualified. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's on a really lingering low mark where okay. once upon a time, he was a graded horse. He's beaten Goshen over fences. I really think the two of them have got like a really good chance. I mean, not in the place, but like Pat will do something silly on Thursday morning, say like first six. And I think like both of them could probably be in the first six. Um, <laughs> Yeah, obviously, Cuthbert, Cuthbert Dibble would be my one of the two, but I just that Gal Road's a really hardy, tough horse. Yeah. He could definitely run a really big race and a tough, hardy handicap. I think he was favourite for the Coral Cup probably three years ago. And all of a sudden, he's aged and he got a tendon injury after he beat Goshen at Ascot. Like the two of them, if it's yeah. good to soft, soft ground, worse ground, the two of them have got really good chances. I don't think there's the Per Temps is actually the one race I love of the festival. There's no such thing as what Gavin likes of the Irish just being dirty and hiding. You have to be in the first four to qualify. It's got rid of all the... The race is called off. Yeah. You're not qualified. You have to run well to qualify. So there's no hiding place. So it actually gives everyone a level playing field. I really like that about the race. Well, you're selling it well for both your horses, I have to say. Um, Pat, what's the story with the two Twiston Davis horses? Well, Cuthbert Dibble's 16. I think the other one's about 25 at the moment. And... I think Cuthbert Dibble is just that solid profile with the each way terms. The mover in the market has been Chantry House, who Nicky Henderson did wonders to finish fourth and therefore qualify last time. And everyone seems to give this horse a, a real chance. Um, he's a 10 year old. You have to be a bit lenient with some of his claims, but uh, there's no denying a, a horse of Chantry House's ability off a marker 143. And um, Nicky was quite pleased with the run to finish fourth and therefore qualify. 
Whether he's eight to one favourite material uh, remains to be seen. There's plenty of lurkers in the race. I'm, I'm sure there'll be movers and shakers in the market. I think Springwell Boy is uh, of John Joe's is an interesting runner. He, he seemed to run very well last time out. He is 11 stone five. He, there's no hiding place for him. I keep coming back to the likes of Cuthbert Dibble and thinking for a horse with his CV, he's around about 16 to one. That would make some appeal, but um, as I say, there's, there seems to be more Chantry House fans in uh, certainly in our office than uh, any <laughs> other horse in the race. Been working with cheek pieces at home, I believe, for uh, Chantry House. Um, Cuthbert Dibble, I think we spoke about after he, he won at Haydock about what a terrific effort it was because he hit the front some way out and showed a wonderful attitude. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a very hardy horse. Willie says that there's no Irish lurkers in this, but I think there is. I think there's a forgotten horse in this race, and I think it's Icar Allen. Um, he qualified at Aintree in November when third, left alone of a mark of 142. Like He was clearly ridden to qualify that day. Um, I'd have a slight concern about him staying the three-mile trip. That would be the only concern, but I think the biggest positive for him is that connections have put him away and brought him straight back to here fresh. Uh, they're obviously delighted with that mark of 142. Um, he's kind of got the opposite profile. Like Cletus Pallor is, is well fancied for this, but he's had to show his hand to the handicapper. So he had to qualify. He finished second. He was raised four pounds by the Irish handicapper and then the, uh, the UK handicapper put another five pounds on. So he was nine pounds higher than when he qualified. Ikara Len qualified off 142. He's still off that same mark. He's only six as well, so he is open to a huge amount of progress. And I thought eight, ten to one, Ikara Len was probably the one to be on. All right, Gav. Uh, yeah, Ikara Len would have a chance, as you say, Steve. Just hard to know if he definitely stay at three miles. Uh, Cuthbert Dibble certainly has an each way chance. So has White Rhino, who stays forever. Uh, the one I go for is Gabby's Cross. <clears throat> was beaten less than four lengths in the Paddy Power handicap chase of 143. Uh, since then, he's had two runs back over hurdles. An impossible task against Buddy One, who's now a stone higher, went on to win at Cheltenham. And uh, also second to Jody Ted, who was chucked in as well compared to his chase rating. So I thought they were two good runs. He's qualified. Uh, Henry has said that they've targeted this race. Hasn't ran since November, but as we've seen before with Henry, he can do that for the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, has an Irish rating of 127 in here of 133. Six pounds was a little bit steep, but only carries, I think, 10 stone seven. At the top weight is likely to stay in for, for Gordon Elliott. So each way chance, uh, Gabby's cross and the pretemps, but an open race. I don't think it's the best pretemps ever, that's for sure. No. Um, I'll defer to you on uh, pronunciation. How do you pronounce Ted Walsh's horse? Uh, I was very bad at Irish at school, but I'll go for Gaith Cool. Gaith Cool. That's the horse I like. Um, really good run last time out at Big Field. Had won the time before that beat Farouk Delen. Um, I think just a really solid selection in what is not, uh, I don't think, a vintage renewal of the Potemps. So that's a look at that uh, handicap hurdle. Let's move on and talk about the first of the big races on day three, and that is the Ryanair Chase. Um, obviously, um, things have changed a little bit with who's running where, but we now have a little idea, Steve. I'll start with you on this race, maybe one or two still in the mix, but the fact that Banbridge is at the top of the market and the ground is the way it is is a bit of a issue. Yeah, you definitely want to be back in him. No runner, no bet if you fancy him in the race. If he does come here and, and the ground does dry up, he, he would have a good chance. Obviously, he was really good um, beating Pictori in the Silver Nike Conti chase at Kempton. Um, all the money's been for Envoy Allen. Uh, you can see why last year's winner, but I'd be slightly worried about him. I think this is a better race this year. I know Shiskin was in it, but he was grumpy that day and just didn't look like he was going a yard. So I do actually think this is a good renewal this year. Um, Stage Star was good in the Turners. Um, what price would he be if he hadn't ran on New Year's Day? But the horse that I'm going to take a massive chance at, or a chance at a massive price, would be a hoist in your... I hope they see sense and run him here. I think he's really interesting. Um, I think he's going to come here because of how strong the Gold Cup is. And, and I do think he has a good, got a good chance in the Ryanair. He's known as an Aintree horse, but actually, if you look back at his Cheltenham form, it's really good. Um, he finished second behind Long Press in the Brown Advisory a couple of years ago. He won the Cotswold Chase last season. Was still going well in the Gold Cup last year when falling. And he had won the Cotswold Chase, I'm sure of it, last time. He was odds-on in running. Obviously, the stirrup broke, was basically unsteerable, and ended up finishing fourth that day. I don't really know what they were doing in the Ascot Chase. Maybe they were just a bit worried that he was going to be too keen coming from January through to March at the festival. Um, but he's rated 166. He's rated the same as what Stage Star is, and he's six, seven times the price of him. It's 33 to one. 
Lucinda Russell is brilliant with these horses in the spring. And yeah, I think Hoyson, you're at Cheltenham, is actually really overpriced. Wow. Um, not sure of, about his jumping, regardless of where he runs. I, I know that he jumped a bit better at, at Ascot, but I mean, you can have a word on this one, or if there's something else you like, Willie. No, I'm not going to agree with him on that one at all. Um, I wouldn't back a horse in the over stolen money. Um, <laughs> he's grand, he wins every now and then, but uh, no, he's not for me at all. He makes, as you said, he makes howlers the whole time. You've got to jump at speed and pace. He can't do it at three miles on soft ground. How are you going to do it on two and a half? If it is good to soft or soft, going at pace, I just can't have it. And if it was, you need to change a jockey and be aggressive like Derek Fox, that's very quiet. They just seem to just make error after error, so that's not for me at all. Uh, Envoy Allen is probably the obvious option. Uh, he's been cussed a lot the whole time, mm. but he keeps coming back to Cheltenham and winning and performing. Um, I completely agree with Stage Star. Like the Paddy Power performance was really impressive, but um, Envoy Allen did have that wow factor, and he brings it every now and then. And I don't, for me, it'd be a no bet race. But like, if, if Envoy Allen turns it on and turns up at his best, then I think he wins the race. I can't see Bambridge liking the ground. I'm, I'm sure it'll still be soft or gluey or tacky by that time of the week. It'd be Envoy Allen or Stage Star, and uh, yeah, if I was riding a horse, I wanted to train one, it'd probably be Envoy Allen. Uh, I'm almost in agreement with you because I, I think Envoy Allen's record at Cheltenham is outstanding. He's been to the festival five times. He's won three. He fell once, and he was third behind the Um He's got an outstanding record at a meeting where you know that they come back again and again and again. Horses that do well at, at it uh, excel. Um, a Stage Star I also like, and I I prefer the young, well, the less exposed horse as opposed to Envoy Allen. Um, Pat, how do you see it? Well, I, th I think uh, the key to this race is what's the ground going to be on the Thursday. If it's got the word good in it, I'm sure Boundbridge will continue to be popular. But just going through the race, this is the sort of race where, as, as compilers, you'd look at and think, we could get a shock result here. And um, I, I think there's a lively outsider, perhaps, and it's fugitive. Um, Richard Hobson's horse, who's ran well last time out. Sean Bowen has been booked to ride the horse. It's the sort of race where... You can go down and think, no, don't fancy that. No, for too old. Pulled up last time. Mm, doesn't get round. And you just sense there could be a shock result. Maybe fugitive at a big price with uh, Sean Bowen aboard each way. Okay, uh, interesting. What about you, Gav? Uh, Hoy Senor is a character, isn't he? He'd be like, if he was in a rock and roll band, he'd be the drummer, I'd say. Um, <laughs> Banbridge, hard to see him running. He didn't run the Turners last year. They waited for entry. Mm. <coughs> they could do the same again. Envoy Allen love the horse always have he's 10 is the only light, slight little worry but he's got a massive chance here stage star will be likely to go out in front if they go on mental gallop if they go way too quick uh i might have an in running play in capitano uh if he goes here he's a big price in betfair as he's 14s etc but um if they just went too quick i keep an eye on him but envoy allen will run a big race too i'd say all right uh i think there's a lot of positivity for Envoy Allen, um, but interesting, one or two at bigger prices, including uh, Ahoy Senor for Steve. So that's a look at the Ryanair chase on day three. Uh, up next, uh, we're going to look ahead to the Stairs Hurdle, uh, which obviously features a lot of familiar names, horses that have been running in the race for a, a number of years. Um, Pat, it's, I'll start with you as, as the most senior member of the panel. Um, you probably know these horses better than most of us. Yeah, I'm in the uh, Paisley Pan Park camp, really, I suppose. Uh, uh, but looking at the market, uh, Tihupu is, is, I think he's a legitimate favourite, particularly if it is soft on the day. We'll work on the basis, Irish Point, and have run on the Tuesday and therefore not turn up. Tihupu, he's just got that overall profile that suggests he's going to be really, really tough to beat. But there's going to be plenty of each way angles in the race. I mean, I think, you know, the likes of Crambo, Noble Yates, are perfectly respectable claims. A few people in the office fancy home by the Lee at a whopping price. He's a nine-year-old. Um, he had chances in the race, I think, last year, and he didn't really turn up for it. Um, he may be overpriced. Again, I do like Paisley Park at the price. I know he's a 12-year-old. He's not running like a 12-year-old at the moment. And uh, I know Emma Lavelle is very happy with him. Um, he, I'm sure we'll be first four places on the race. I mean, he's, he's running to a good level. Um, I, but I do think this is a worthy favourite and it'll be tough to beat. But uh, Paisley Park, bit of head and bit of heart, maybe each way. Okay, nothing like a bit of sentiment, Gavin. And sentiment is going to play a part. There's so many of the horses that we've, we've grown to love over the years. Absolutely, <clears throat> and none more so than Sire de Berle. He's now 12. He keeps defying everything we all think about him. Wins uh, it last year, wins at Aintree, runs a cracker at Punchstown. So he's a, an amazing horse. He won two per temps, thanks be to God. 
Bar <laughs> Barry Garrity gave an amazing ride uh, the first year to win it. So he's just a horse that it's not like they've been stopping him all winter. You know, he has one or two runs before he gets to Cheltenham. I think it's a genuinely a case that he improves for later on in the season. Uh, he'd have a squeak. He's 20 to 1. Obviously, he's the wrong age. Um, I don't think Noble Yates will be quick enough unless they go too quick. I don't want to steal Steve's thunder. We were talking earlier on. <coughs> um, I would give Florian Porter a chance. Uh, my plan would be, Steve said there's no other pace in the race, so I'll go with that. Um, Keith Donahue likely to ride instead of Danny. Danny was amazing on him the two years he won the race. Um, the time was actually quicker in the pretemps, I think, and certainly in some parts of the race than the uh, the stairs, but that was down to Danny's brilliance. Uh, Gavin said that he did interrupt a prep last year. He's been over fences. I think I might have something on him at 12 to 1 and lay him off and running at like 4 or 5 to 1. Just do chicken out and <laughs> just kind of be sensible. Uh, there's one double you cannot do on the Thursday, and that's Banbridge and Tiupu because one wants good ground and the yeah. other one's soft ground. <laughs> so uh, make sure you don't do that double. But uh, there's nobody talking about the ground for Tiupu. To me, he's has to have soft ground. Now his record, after a 50 day break, he's eight from eight. Mm. And perhaps last year, Gordon felt he left the, the race behind him when he went to the Galmoy. Now he, he beat a 12 year old that day in, in, in Goran Park, but it might have just knocked the edge off him. He has a good chance, but I definitely couldn't back him a two to one. Uh, so I might just do the, the chicken out with flooring port beforehand and lay in running at five to one. All right, uh, Steve, I'll let you have next crack and you can endorse the flooring porter angle. Yeah, I've kind of got myself in a position where he's going to make or break my festival floor in Porter. Wow. Um, I, I've even if even if um, Coco Beach wins the cross country. Yeah, I've, wow. I'm, I'm I'm in quite deep on floor in oh, Porter. Sorry, you should probably um, speak to someone. <laughs> he, he's obviously a quirky horse. He's a quirky ride, and he, and he takes some knowing. Either Keith or, or Danny Mullins on board. I'm sure it will be Keith on board. Um, won this in 2021, 2022. Like Gavin said, had an interrupted prep last year. When he finished fourth, um, he's been okay over fences, uh, but he's just not not been great. That uh, chase win was at Cheltenham. He's just absolutely loves the place for some reason. Um, yeah, I think he'll get an easy lead. The only other horse that could possibly lead is Dash or Drasher, but he, he's not coming into this in the best of form. So I think Florian Port will probably get an easy lead. And the one that I'd be worried about staying on strongly at the finish would be Crambo. Um, a lot of people think Noble Yates will be the one staying on best at the finish, but I just think he'll get too far behind. He obviously won the Cleve Hurdle, but this is just a next level. Um, if Florian Porter's in this, I, I think he'll get too far behind, and, and Crambo, I think, can see uh, staying on best. To, best of the rest, Tiapu, yeah, he's, he, he's a good horse, but there wasn't many excuses last year. I know Florian Porter finished behind him, but he had an interrupted prep, and yeah, he's still available at, at sort of nine to one, and yeah, I, re I really like Florian Porter for this. Uh, sentiment again. <laughs> uh, Willie, how do you see it? I wish I, Irish Point was running. Oh. I really, really like that horse. I think he's a very, very good horse. I think he's the best for the division, but obviously he's probably not going to run. Um, for a selfish point of view, Tom Bellamy's probably my best friend, so I'd love Paisley Park to do the job, but realistically I can't see it happening. Uh, I think Nobby Yates is too slow. Um, I agree with pretty much everyone said. Um, for me, it would have to be... Go back to your page. <laughs> Crambo, Crambo, I can't have. Irish Point. Yeah, no. Flooring Porter, if he was to run. I thought all along, see, I thought he was going to run in the National Hunt Chase. Uh, I like the fact Keith Donahue's on him now. I think Danny Mullins is a brilliant jockey. No yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. But ever since he's got on some of them Grandma, Gavin Cromwell horses, just the bit of patient riding out in front, like he'll dictate the pace a bit different. I don't know. I've got this little bee in my bonnet about it. I think Florian Porter's got a great chance. Obviously, I'd love uh, Paisley Park to run well, but obviously Irish Point's not going to run. So the whole yeah. market will change massively in the next week. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd say Florian Porter each way. I agree with that. And uh, if Irish Point did run, then uh, yeah, I think he'd have a massive yeah. chance, but he's not going to, is he? Gavin Cromwell has confirmed today that Florian Porter runs in the... He wasn't even confirmed for the National Hunt Chase, so he's definitely going for the... Yeah, definitely. Uh, they're all leaving the National Hunt Chase open. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I, I like Crambo. The two seven-year-olds, assuming the Irish point goes for the champion. Um, the two, two youngest horses are Tiapu and Crambo. Um, Tiapu's run four times more than Crambo. Crambo's still improving. The winner to Ascot. Um, I know he only narrowly beat Paisley Park, but I think he was dominant at the end of the race and the further they were going. If you watch, he and Paisley Park have pulled miles clear of Dashiell Drasher and, and some of the other oldies. 
Um, and as they were hitting the line, he was going away from uh, Paisley Park. And I think he's, he's just got more improvement as a younger, less exposed horse. So I'd rather be with a horse like that um, against all these horses that we've seen a lot of over the years. So that's the Stayers Hurdle, uh, which is obviously the fourth race on day three. Next on day three, we're going to look ahead to the plate. Um, obviously, we'll defer to Gavin to kick things off, given the Irish record in this race. <laughs> Um, I tipped up Cribilli last week at 6-1. to one. <clears throat> I thought that was value. He looks very well treated off 140. Uh, jockey didn't get too shuffly until after the last in Exeter. Yeah. Uh, he's got some very, very good form in his three runs. I think his jumping's okay. I just think 7-2 to two is getting too tight. Um, so perhaps Theatre Man at 6-1. to one. Super run the last day. I think that... Uh, I think the right to go here instead of the Ultima is two runs in Newbury over 2-7. I think this trip is more of his trip and uh, flashed home the last day. And uh, yeah, I think it's got very, very solid form. So six to one, just a pity. If the price on Cribilli <coughs> comes back out a bit, perhaps him, but he's just getting too tight at seven to two. All right. Um, Steve, how do you see this one? Yeah, I also like Theatre Man in this. Um, obviously has the option of the ultimate. I do think he'll end up coming here with the ground being soft. Um, only had three starts over fences, finished only two and three quarter lengths behind Ginny's Destiny. And that rival's currently favorite for the, for the Turners. Yeah. That was off a mark of 134. He's only three pound higher here. Um, off a mark of 137, I'm sure he has to go well. Uh, the other that I like is Shake'em Up Harry. He finished third in the race last season, off a mark of 139, and is only four pounds higher this year. The Ben Paul in Stable obviously are in much better form this year. Um, he won over the course and distance last time, beating Ferrero Brambu by seven and a half lengths. Our dancer was eight lengths back in third that day, and he's come out and ran well at Kempton to finish second next time. The handicap has only put him up three pounds for a seven and a half length win over the course and distance. Like that seems really lenient to me. And he's fourteen to one. They run a no bet. So out of the two, I do, I do like Theatre Man, but Shake Him Up Harry would be my preferred. Okay, Shake Him Up Harry, and another positive mention for Theatre Man, uh, Willie. I really like Crab Billy. Uh, I think it's hurdle that EBF final that's going to be run on Saturday. He ran it last year. The whole race worked out brilliant. We had Cuff, uh, Crambo won it. Cuffpit Dibble ran in it. In, in Eston of Ollie Harris was second. Uh, Henry the second was in the race. The whole race has worked out winner after winner after winner. I think he's probably still on a decent mark. Uh, his jumping looks better. John Joe is very good at producing horses for this meeting in certain races, especially in those colours. I think John Joe Jr. rides the track particularly well, very patient. A mistake won't be made. Is, uh, yeah, fear to bad, uh, great. Let, uh, well, why has he been beaten the last four times? We've got to run the festival. You've got to find £10. Where's that coming from? It's not coming from the horse's ability, but credibility's obviously got it. So mm. you've got to find the angles where these horses actually are. I've got the, it's like you watch a horse run and go, oh, it's run a brilliant race there at Newbury. It's run a brilliant race there. But how are you going to find an extra £10, which you need up your sleeve to win at the festival? Yeah. So I'm taking, we're taking Cuffbutt Dibble there. Yeah, he's won twice. Where are we going to find the next £10? That's what William Mullins has got. That's what Gordon Elliott's got. That's what you need. Those horses haven't got it. Like, fear to man. He, Richard Bandy hasn't been saving him for the festival. He's been trying to win every run it's had. Yeah. Not saying horse records the way it's going, but they've got to have a little bit of their sleeve. And I don't think that, that horse got anything to do with Cred Billy. has been obviously campaigned con uh, accordingly, yeah. so he'd be my horse, definitely. Yeah, indeed. Even, even in victory, it looked as if there was a little bit up his sleeve for the future. Pat, how do you see it? Well, this is an unusual race in that when the, the weights and the entries came out, you do look at the race and think, well, all the Irish runners, every single one of them is exposed. So this is a, a scenario where there's only two horses that have been back to the exclusion of the others, and they've been well touted here, Cribilli and Theatre Man. Now, obviously, with the Theatre Man second to uh, Ginny's Destiny, that, that might look even better by then. But it, it all points to Cribilli. We, we put this horse in as favourite, bracing ourselves for the onslaught, J.P. McManus. There'd be a lot of hype about the horse. But you do go through his form... When he, when he fell first time out this season, he was probably going best, and that was at Cheltenham. Last run, I was trying to be devil's advocate, so I was only a three-runner race he won, but playing it back, he was always going to win that race, and he's just been mapped out for this race, and unusually, there's going to be, I don't know, 20-odd runners. It's just, from our point of view at the moment, it's just all about the big two, Crabilly and Theatre Man, so we're in an unusual position of hoping to have uh, one of the Irish horses come and bail us out. <laughs> Okay, lots of positives for Crabilly and Theatre Man uh, in that. Up next, we're going to look at the Ryanair Mare's Novices Hurdle. Um, a lot of well-touted horses in this race. Um, Steve, I'm going to start down at your end for this. 
Um, you can take your pick on who you'd like to start with. Brighter Days Ahead, Jay de Grugy, Dyson Enos. Yeah, you could start with Lydic. This is just a brilliant race, isn't it? Um, Brighter Days Ahead would probably be the way I'd go. She's getting short enough now, though, at 13 to 8, 5 from 5 under rules. Her winning distances have been brilliant. I wouldn't have any concern about her dropping down in trip. I know a few are saying, obviously, she won over two mile five last time. But she's got plenty of pace. She jumped a lot better last time. She settled a lot better last time. And I think she's probably the one to beat. Jade Grugy obviously, has looked brilliant in her two starts. Dysart Enos has been campaigned to obviously not get the penalty. I'd give a shout to Golden Ace. She's got good form on another year. She'd probably be a leading contender. But I think she's got ahead of her three genuine grade one performers. Um, and yeah, I, I know the price has kind of gone now, but if I had to have a selection, it would be bright days ahead. Well, are you a fan of this race? <laughs> no, this race is fine. <laughs> um, not, no, in normal years, I'd say no, because I'd like to see, yeah. well, why wouldn't you want to see bright days ahead? You'd love to see Dyson Enos, a genuine 10 to 1 shot for the Supreme. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you want to see them in there? But it's brilliant for the mayors to get to, um, obviously, the headlines they get. I really admire Dyson Enos. I've not seen a mayor win like that. She did the, uh, the entry bumper. Her jumping performance at Huntingdon, first time out, was really underwhelming. And she's beaten nothing since, really. She's hacked around the canter. I'd love to see her have some match performance. It's, it's kind of worth having the penalty that Brighter Days Ahead's got, as having a bit of mm. rough and tumble and actually having a bit of a race. Um, for me, Brighter Days Ahead, I've not seen Gordon or any of that camp talk about her the way she is. I think she just goes and does the job. I mean, we've got Casano Mento in the race. She won't be running. Um, she was just behind Queen's Gamble at Taunton, but neither of them go, so that formalised not much. But I, I do give a little bit of a squeak for the Jeremy Scott horse. I respect him a lot, and he doesn't Golden talk Ace. his horse up much. Mm. And she looks as like she travels, jumps well, and you know, slow to the boil, and she could be improving the whole time. I'd like to give her an each-way squeak, but for me, it'd be brighter days ahead. Uh, Dyson is very good, but I just think she'll lack the match practice when it comes down to the final two hurdles. Pat? I think you could say there's just probably just the three and a half runners, aren't there? The half is the golden ace. Uh, from our point of view, it's just been all one-way traffic with brighter days ahead. She just continues to shorten up in the market. But every time you see Gordon Elliott or indeed Jack Kennedy interviewed, they are very, very bullish about them. And, but it's great to have a, a race where they've all got the, all these ones by their name, isn't it? And uh, we can judge them on, on what they are. I, I do keep coming back to Dysa Enos. I just think the five-pound that she's getting from the, the, the previous grade one wins. I think that could even be gold dust, couldn't it? And then, you know, you're talking about uh, first three places, she's nine to two. I, I take Willie's point on board that, you know, she hasn't been onto the battlefield as, as much as the others, but she's really, really good. Uh, the Aintree bumper just said to her that what a big future she has. She's come out and done it. And it would be great for Fergal O'Brien, yet to have a winner at the festival. So there'll be a lot of, you know, goodwill attached to her, to, to her claim. Um, and I think I'd rather back Dyson Enos at 9-2 to two than mm. Brighter Days Ahead at now at 13-8. to eight. You'll probably have two winners on the day, obviously, Crambo and Dyson Enos. So, um, what do you think? Just to keep you happy. <laughs> uh, I'll go for Brighter Days Ahead. Uh, the vibes are that if, for example, Brighter Days Ahead ran against Firefox getting £7, that she'd win. That's how highly they rate her. She comes from the best family since the Jackson 5. <laughs> and that's not yesterday. <laughs> when you were going to roller discos to the Jackson 5. I still am. Her, I still am, yeah. <laughs> um, her brothers include Caldwell Potter, Mighty Potter, Indiana Jones and French Dynamite. So at the moment, she's possibly the worst of the five. <laughs> but I think in a couple of years, that might change. Uh, her form is very good. Uh, two bumper wins. She wasn't impressive first time in Thurlis. She jumped to her left. At Down Royal the next day, she jumped quite straight. She jumped just okay. Her jump of the next day in Navin was much better. There's only two hurdles in the last seven and a half furlongs. And just to point out that if people are worried about her toe or her speed, the day in Down Royal, she only carried 10-10. Irish Point did carry, I think, 12 stone. But she was four or five seconds quicker than him. So she was 20 lengths quicker, even though she did lighter weight. So she has plenty of gears. If Willie Mullins has six or seven winners before this race, they could go off giant favourites. Uh, with J.D. Grugy, who has the best form on the page. Uh, winning the Sol Arena every year is, is a very good pointer to this, and she was very, very good. Her first win was over 2.5, the last it was 2-2. Two, two. The Mayor's Novice is 2-1, so she has the gears as well. Um, I think Dysart Enos has got a lot in her plate in this race. Okay. I love Dysart Enos. I know, she, I know she's got a lot on her plate because, as much as anything else, there has been, I mean, Willie, you mentioned it, everyone's mentioned it, that the way that the Gordon Elliott 
team, Jack Kennedy, have spoken about her, suggests that Brighter Days Ahead is something way above average. Um, but so is Dysot Enos. And if you remove the hype and just look at the three horses, Jade Degrushi, Dysot Enos, and uh, Brighter Days Ahead, you can look at really hard at sort of taking a line through Mel Monroe and stuff like that. But I don't think there's that much discrepancy between their performances. I know she's got an official rating of one three and I think that's lenient. And I think suggesting that... So you'll back her each way? Yeah. I'll back her to win. To win? I, I think she'll win. Okay. She's getting five pounds. I think she'll travel. I think she's probably got more speed than the two horses. Um, and she's getting five pounds up the hill. She will fly past them. Dice our Enos for me. Okay. Uh, one more race to look at on day three. And that, of course, is the Kim Muir. Um, who would like to go for Willie, I'll let you go first here for the uh, Kim Muir. Um, might have a runner? Exactly. It's all down to we've all been caught. Um, if we don't get to the ultimate, he might go here. But he's also got the option of you talk to on the Saturday. I generally believe wherever the horse runs, just keep your eye on him. I, I really believe he's very, very well handicapped of 134. He's a couple of lengths behind Broadway Boy. Wherever he turns up next, I've never seen the horse work so well as I did... Um, Tuesday morning and last Friday, he is absolutely flying. Wherever he goes, he's got a massive chance. Um, so I keep my eye on him, but I'd, I'd be reluctant to say he'll run in the Kim Muir if he doesn't go to the Ultima because the owners are quite keen for Sam to ride. So he might go to Toxter on the Saturday if he didn't run in the Ultima. Uh, apart from that, I wouldn't have a major opinion. I think if our horse turns up and runs in the race, he'd have a massive chance. His schooling, his working. Um, Dad made some silly comments a couple of years ago when he won a bumper that he'd be our next Gold Cup horse and we've always <laughs> thought he was very, very talented but he had a fibrillating heart and everything's gone right now. I really believe where this horse goes next is I'd be very shocked if there's not a one next to his name. Okay. Pat, give us a steer. Well, um, again, since the uh, the weights came out, I know the way you're thinking has been all the rage here and again, I don't know if it's maybe just run in for cover a little bit. It's a JP McManus horse, and we always like to put them in short because we know there's going to be money on the day. That being said, he, he is number one on the race card. He's going to carry 12 stone, but he's currently four to one. I can't imagine he's going to be any shorter than that. Um, that's the best steer I can give you thus far. It's been probably the lightest betting race out of them all. If you're an, And I know the way you're thinking, fan, good for you, but uh, you're going to have to pay four to one to defy top weight to win it at the moment. Uh, maybe Angel's Dawn might perhaps offer some value of course and distance winner as for good time Johnny clearly he'd be mapped out for the race but um, you know it's a conflict of handicappers opinion really so the lightest betting race of the lot but if you, I say the favourite is 12 stone on its back so not for me ok um, go Gav you know the way he said that I know the way you're thinking won't go off shorter than 4 to 1 <laughs> I think he will um <coughs> If you go and look at his run in Limerick, okay, mm -hmm. so his first run, I think, was behind Imagine and Fairy House, uh, then behind Gaelic Warrior and Punchestown. His third run in a grade one in Limerick, he's beaten five and a half lengths by Gaelic Warrior going right-handed in a grade one, who is a brilliant horse going right-handed. And he's a length and a half behind Ile Te Tomp. Like, he comes on and wins the Irish Arkle. He's one of the favourites for the English Arkle. Um, I think this horse would have a great chance in the Turners, to be honest. Uh, I wasn't fancying him originally. It was like Percival Le Galois and Good Time Johnny, etc. They were off 137. Percival Le Galois gets seven pounds. I'll come back to Good Time Johnny in a minute. Uh, this guy was 143 in Ireland. Uh, the last day over fences was kind of a, an eye opener for handicaps. I couldn't believe he only got two pounds. So he sneaks in here off the top weight 145. I think he's one of the bets of the week. I think he's got a massive chance. Um, you might wonder, is he definitely going to stay the trip? But if you go in and uh, look who he's related to, uh, I'll just click on it here. Limerick Lace, who's second in the Tritown. Uh, Spades or Trumps won the Ulster National over three miles four and down Patrick. Uh, I like the way you're thinking as one over further. So does <coughs> Walk Me Home, who was the, the least talented of the family. Um, the brighter days ahead of the family. <coughs> yeah. Um, so I think he's got a massive chance. One other horse to mention is Whacker Clan. Won a handicap chase in Cheltenham off 125. Um, up to 131. <coughs> if it sneaks in here, it has a chance of lightweight. Will be out in front, jumps very well. Um, had a school over hurdles two miles in Nace recently. Uh, finished fifth or sixth, ran a, ran a lovely race. Uh, last year's winner uh, is up 11 pounds for winning the race, uh, which is Angel's Dawn. And Good Time Johnny's up town 10 pounds for not running. Um, <laughs> he's 132 in Ireland, he's 142 here. 
I don't know whether they'll come or not. I, I'd say they mightn't because of that. Mm. But I think I like the way you're thinking is worth something at four to one. I know it's short, but I think maybe Whacker Clan each way at twelve to one. Okay, interesting thoughts there, uh, Steve. Your thoughts on? Yeah, you definitely want a plot job for this. So only two out of the last twenty-one winners have won last time out. So yeah, you definitely want one that's been targeted at this from a long way out. I thought Fakir Dalem was probably quite a big price at twenty-five to one. Was sent off thirty-three to one for the race a couple of years ago. Went fourth off a mark of 144 and is a pound lower this year. Um, he was brought down in the Irish National on his next start and then missed the whole of the next season. So he obviously got an injury. Um, he finished third behind Coco Beach, who obviously I'm a massive fan of, um, in the Troy Town uh, this year. So, so he's kind of come back to form. He was the choice of Jack Kennedy in the Paddy Power when he was brought down, which I think probably says a lot. Um, jumped poorly in the Thursdays last time, probably lost his confidence having been brought down. Um, Harry Swan rode him a couple of years ago. He'd be a good booking again. Obviously, he's improved loads through bumpers. Um, I'd like to have some weight claimed off him. He's curry, currently down as carrying 11 stone 12. So 25 to 1, Fakir Delane at a big price. All right. Well, that concludes the look at the final race on day three. But I'm going to go through uh, best selections on day three. Um, shall I start with you again, Steve? You've been pretty good off the bat first up, so away you go. It's going to have to be Flooring Porter in the stairs out of. Flooring Porter. Uh, Willie, best one on day three? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy, very happy with Cuthbert Dibble each way. Okay, Cuthbert Dibble each way. Pat? I'll go for Dice Enos receiving the five. Oh, hang on a second. You can't, you got. <laughs> uh, I was about to swear, but I can't. Rishi, I know the way you're thinking. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, and that would be. I know the way you're thinking. No. And the way I'm Dice thinking. Dice Artinos. Correct. Uh, you know, yeah, you got there. Dice Artinos as well for me uh, in the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. That is a wrap for day three of the Racing Weekly Cheltenham Festival preview, uh, brought to you by Auschecker in association with Bet365. Thanks very much to my guests. We still, though, have one more to go.